following presentation has been closed captioned for the hearing impaired. Fame Day, and we're going to meet three very special kids from divorced families who are helping other kids deal with the problems of divorce. We're also going to reach into our mailbag and answer some of your questions. Plus, we'll have a lot of fun with a very cool video jam. But first, let's look in on a guy whose parents are always there for him. This is a really nice place. You know, I've been trying to get up the nerve to ask you out for weeks now. I'm really glad you did. Um, will you excuse me for a second? I'll be right back. I'll be right here. <laughs> okay, calm down. Everything's going just fine. Good evening. My name is Abdul. I will be your waiter this evening. Dad! <laughs> Dad, what are you doing here? Buddy, it's your first date. I want to be sure everything goes all right for my son. No, boy, you've got to leave before she gets back. Hey, no way. I'm here to troubleshoot. Make you look good. Besides, I had to fork over 50 bucks to the maitre d' to get in here. <laughs> Is this one of those things that I just don't understand, but we'll thank you for later? Exactly. I think I'll thank you now. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Listen to me. The key here are the three A's, all right? The girl is always attractive, always amusing, always absolutely right. Can you remember that? Yeah, Dad, but... Oh, wait, wait, here she comes, here she comes. Remember, attractive, amusing, absolutely right. Here! 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 Yes, my, good evening to you. What an attractive young woman. Of course, that's not surprising with such a handsome young man as yourself. May I recommend the Dajaj? What's Dajaj? Uh, Dajaj? Oh. Uh... <laughs> Chicken. You speak Moroccan? Well, not fluently, but... I'm impressed. Um, how about Samic? Samic, um... Uh... Elephant. <laughs> Fish. Yes, yes, elephant fish. Very rare. Very large fish. Found only in the Sahara. Uh, and an oasis. Big, big, big oasis fish. Yes, uh, how about I bring you your appetizers now? Yes. Very good. They really have good service here. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a very attractive dress. Thank you. I'm really glad you like it. Um, I couldn't find anything Moroccan at the mall, so... <laughs> Are you okay? Uh, yeah, I just sometimes laugh uncontrollably. Hello there! Would you like to buy a flower? Oh, no. Would you excuse me for a moment? 
This, I brought you some lovely Brie Watts. <laughs> Mom, go home. Don't be silly. This is part of the library. You know what I'm saying? We've got first steps, potty training, cub scouts. And now my little boy is dating. <laughs> oh, here, give Lisa a flower. Mom, go away. Go, oh, and your father, ignore him. He was not such a hot date himself. You know what I'm saying? He kept laughing like a hyena. <laughs> Oh, well, anyhow, you get back over there. Sit up straight like this, like so, all right? And see if you can't get Lisa to talk louder. I cannot pick her up in this microphone. Why were you arguing with the flower lady? Flower lady? Uh, what flower lady? <laughs> oh, 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 whoa, oh, whoa. Oh, oh. Oh, no, oh. Abdul has fallen oh. on the elephant fish store. Oh. Quick, someone help. Oh, we'll miss him a pre-med student. I get out of here, buddy. You, a handsome young man who obviously knows how to set a broken arm. Lay. Lay. You are our only hope. David, are you pants gonna come on all our dates today? You mean you knew all along? Well, while you were talking to your mom, your dad's mustache fell in my blue eye. My parents are so unbelievable. I know exactly what you mean. In fact, my mom's a belly dancer and my dad's over there pretending to be the maitre d'. <laughs> That's your father? The guy with the bad goatee? I gave him 50 bucks! Hey, hey, hey! Come back! Oh, excuse me. Come back! You're doing that back my money! You know, why don't we just go to that Chinese restaurant across the street where we're not related to the staff? <laughs> Good idea. Child. I know, I just saw Lisa's mother pull up with a rickshaw. All right, you get on the dragon costume. I will take this camera, hide it in the egg, Boo Young. <laughs> This is a letter from Jennifer Grant of Thorold, South Ontario, a fellow Canadian, and she writes, Dear Mark, have you ever been hit by a moose? Because my friend Daphne was when she was eight. Well, actually, I've never been hit by a moose. Uh... All right, she also writes, have you ever tried playing pool, only replacing the balls with eggs? Well, once again, I can honestly tell you I've never done that. But since I love playing pool and Dale's usually my partner, we thought we'd give it a try. All right, Dale, did you want a break? Or... Uh, no, that's all you, buddy. You sure? That's you. All right. Here we go, Jennifer. <laughs> well, maybe the pool table wasn't the best place for something like this. So, uh, Josh, Ricky, could I just step in for a second? Sure. All right. Rick, you ready? Sure. All right. Uh, no, no. Oh, no. Jennifer, thanks a lot for your letter. We'll be sending you a Mickey Mouse Club t-shirt. All right, so how do you want your eggs served, huh? None for uh, me, buddy. No, I can't thanks. Go. <laughs> well, if you have any questions, write to us at Mouse Mail. Mickey Mouse Club, Disney, MGM Studios, P.O. Box 10200, Lake Buena Vista, Florida, 32830. And be sure to include your name, address, and phone number. Here's Matt, Mark, Nita, Nikki, Ricky, Rona, Ryan, Tony, Alana, Carrie. Oh, forget it. Here's the whole club in a video jam called We Are Family. <laughs>
Liz, it looks great. <laughs> hey, welcome to Hair, where all of our hair needs are met. And what a perfect backdrop for mouse mail, especially this one. From Aaron Myers from Byfield, Massachusetts, who wants to know, does your club care for the environment and the ozone by using hairsprays with no CFCs? Very good question, Aaron, and a very serious one in times like these. We make sure that all of our hairsprays have no CFCs in them, which can damage the ozone layer. All of our hairsprays use a biodegradable formula, and our shampoos and conditioners are all natural. Oh, come with me. This is our makeup department, where we make sure that all of our makeup is animal friendly. None of it is tested on any living thing, right? Absolutely. You bet. <laughs> and get this, we use hairspray and makeup companies that recycle their containers, which helps to save on our landfills. Also, we recycle our aluminum cans and paper products. So we're doing our part, but now I ask you, what are you doing for the environment? This is one question we need to ask ourselves. Thank you very much for the question, Aaron, and you'll be receiving a Mickey Mouse Club t-shirt. Do you know anybody whose parents are divorced? Well, chances are you probably do, because half of all marriages today end in divorce. But divorce doesn't only affect the parents. The kids also have to go through this traumatic change. And here with us today are three Hall of Fame honorees who are not only children who come from divorced families. They help other kids go through the pain and suffering that happens when parents get split up. And here with us today, please give a warm welcome to Becca Cerny, Aaron Corwin, and Shannon Soul. Thank you guys very much for coming today. Um, can you please, each one of you, share with us what it was like when your parents got divorced? I remember coming home from my grandmother's and walking in my house and all my dad's stuff was gone. And I knew that my parents had argued, but I mean, it just kind of shocked me. I was like, where did this come from? And I walked in and the TV was gone and the couch, a couch was out and I was just completely flabbergasted. Um, it's been hard for me because I don't have any memories of when my parents were together. And so that's been one of the hardest things for me. How young were you? I was four, and therefore I don't remember the good memories and the bad, so that's also good, too, so I don't remember the fights and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
um, I was young, but I do remember that all of a sudden one day my dad was gone and he wasn't there. And then, and then from what I remember, all of a sudden I was thrown into a step family. And, you know, I was like, I don't want to get along with these people, you know, and I hated it. I'm like, this destroyed my life. You know, I want it back the way it was with my parents together. Now, what do you guys do now to help kids? Um, I work on a hotline, which um, I sit on the phones and I answer people that call in with problems. And I remember one night a girl called and she was just completely torn apart. Her parents had gotten a divorce and she felt like they put her in the middle. Um, after talking, I tried to give her the opportunity just to think of her own solution. I offered her options that she could have to, you know, work through the problem. And um, I think after that conversation, after being able to talk about it, it really helped her a lot. Yeah, I've started a teen support group at a church. And also, I'm in the um, head of the tour, uh, teen support group um, at a family organization. I help my mom with the Step Family Association of America. And I answer the phones, the people who call our house. And usually, I ask them, you know, do you have any children's be children? Because I'd really like those children to call maybe, and I could start my own support group and talk to those children. Because many kids are very reluctant to come and talk about their problems. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard. And I. You know, I've talked to some kids who are like, well, you know, it happened so long ago, why should I? But you still have that hurt inside and you really need to come. Now, when you talk with kids who are telling you about their problems they go through day by day, what are some of the responses you get from the kids? Um, a lot of, I have a lot of friends that come to me and say that they hate being caught in the middle. Um, one parent saying, tell your father that I said this, tell your mother that I said this. They completely, it just rips them apart. They don't want to be put in the middle. You know, they love both parents. They don't want to have to choose sides. Yeah, um, a lot of my friends come to me and talk to me about how um, their parents will um, say you can't live with him or you can't live with her, and they don't know who to go live with. Well, I had one friend who came to me and said, Aaron, why is this happening to me? It's my fault. What did I do wrong? You know, what did I say to my parents to make them not want to live in the same house again? You know, and, I, and she was just like, you know, I, I, my life is being torn apart. I hate it, you know. I'm, I'm, I can't live till tomorrow. So. Mm. Before we go into the audience with some questions, I have one more thing to ask. Um, what have you learned about yourself personally? What have, what have you learned about yourself that, that's, that's come out of this divorce? Each of you, Becca? Um, I think one thing that's most important that I've seen when I see my parents arguing, it showed me that to have a successful relationship with anyone, whether it be a spouse or friends, that it's so important to communicate and to tell somebody how you're feeling. And people can't read minds. I mean, a lot of time you expect somebody to know what you're thinking and they can't do that. And I mean, it even goes to like dating, you know, whether it's a guy or a girl that saw their parents getting divorced, it's so important in all relation relationships that you communicate with somebody and tell them what you're thinking. Um, I've learned also like her, you know, communication, but I've also learned about myself that um, you can get through just about anything and it doesn't matter what it is, but you can get through it. Well, uh, I've learned that, you know, you have to take it day by day and um, you can't take sides with your one mother or father and you can't blame people for what happens because sometimes that does happen. You know, your parents just don't get along anymore and you have to accept the fact and, you know, you have to learn to live with it and make it better. Okay, we have some questions from the audience. Um, yes. When you first, um, like, lived with your stepsisters and stepbrothers, did you get along with them, like, at first? Well, for me, at first, all of a sudden I was thrown into this, um, I was the middle child. I went from being the only child to the middle child. And I was, I lived, you know, in this house, in one bedroom with my other two stepsisters. And at first I did have to share the bed with my other stepsister. And I didn't really know this girl. So for a long time I did not get along with my stepsisters. But we were going through the introduction phase and getting to know one another. So, um, how, do I, how would I put up with my, my dad's girlfriend if I really don't get along with her? Well, what you have to do is you have to look at this other person and say, I don't like you, but I'm going to try and see, you know, if we have anything in common. And you need to talk, sit down and talk to this person and see, well, what don't I like about you? Or, you know, why don't we get along? And you need to communicate with the person. Do you have a question? Yes. Um, do you think that with having a family counselor, do things get better? Or do you have a hard time with a divorce? Yeah, because a lot of times you need, like, a mediator to come in between you and your parents because, like, I couldn't see where my stepdad was coming from and he couldn't see where I was coming from, so a lot of times that helps. Um, I have two questions. First one is, were you glad that your parents got divorced or did you want them to stay, get, stay together for your sake? I was, <clears throat> at first, I wanted them to stay together just because that's 
I mean, that's completely normal. When someone's parents get divorced, I mean, you're used to seeing family on TV. That's what you see. You see families happy together. Um, so at first, I really wanted them to stay together. But then as I thought of all the arguing and the peacefulness that came after they divorced, I was um, happy. But then you've got to think, if they stay together for the kids' sake, what are the kids going to see while their parents are together? Are the parents just not going to talk? Are they never going to, you know, get along? Are they going to try to ignore what the problem is and what's going on? And um, what did you used to do when you saw your parents fighting? When I saw my parents fighting, I would usually leave. I, I didn't want to be involved. I didn't want to be drawn in. I would either go to my room and close the door. I'd go to a friend's house. I just, I really didn't want to have any part of it. You just try and totally block it out as much as you can, even though it can be quite hard because it's there around you and it's in your life. But, you know, you can try. You well, know, different from them, I, um, I would, like, jump in the middle of it, and then I would find myself in the middle of it, but I would jump in so I could try and get them to stop. But, I mean, that was a mistake. You know, um, I personally can relate, because when, when I was really young, um, my parents got divorced, and so I wasn't, I wasn't um, exposed to it, luckily. You know, I feel lucky. And I have a wonderful stepfather, and we have a great relationship. And my mom and my dad, my mom and my stepdad have a great relationship. And we all, you know, there's a, there's a great amount of communication. You know, we, we all talk to each other. There's a problem. It's discussed, you know. And I see my dad frequently. So, and we, you know, it, I, I feel really lucky, you know. Yeah. And I show a lot of admiration to y'all really for, for doing what you've done. Many of my friends come from divorced families, and I'm not sure how to react to them. How would you want your friends to react to you? Um, I think specifically it's important to show, like when your friends come to you and talk to you, you may hear some shocking things. You may hear something that you've never heard of in your family. My dad had an affair with this woman who was married and, you know, it could be stuff that you've never heard before. I think it's important to show them that you accept them, you know, for who they are and what they're saying and that you're not going to turn them off and you're not going to not be their friend because of what's going on with their parents. Just basically, um, just to listen to them and to be there for them. Um, do you have a question? <coughs> yes. My parents are divorced, and they still fight a lot, and they always put me in the middle of it. What should I do? Well, first of all, stay out of it. And, um, are they, you know, you just have to say, I'm not going to do this, you know. You can't put me in the middle. You know, this is not my fight. It's your fight, you know, and you guys have to talk it out. And it, I love you both, you know, and I really don't want to see you fighting, so you just have to walk away from it. You know, if, if you guys could give one piece of advice to somebody, you know, just generally one piece of advice, to someone who's going through this, you know, this hard times in their life, what would it be? Um, I would say communicate with your parents and your friends because you need as much support as you can get. And also, like, get a group, get in a group, and so you can feel like, you know, you're together with someone even though your parents are apart. Becca, Shannon, and Aaron, thank you so much for coming on the show. And each one of you has really reached out to help a lot of kids, including all of us here today. And for that, we'd like to welcome you into our Mickey Mouse Club Hall of Fame. Now, if you know anyone that you think is really special and you want to tell us about him or her, write to us at Hall of Fame, Mickey Mouse Club, Disney MGM Studios, P.O. Box 10200, Lake Buena Vista, Florida, 32830. And be sure to include your name, address, and telephone number. Once again, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thank One more round of applause for them. Please.
Mickey Mouse Club is videotaped before a live audience at the Disney MGM Studios in Lake Buena Vista, Florida. Today it's party day and we've got the wildest party animals around. Meet some fine feathered friends. How beautiful she is. Plus, a lucky viewer visits the set of Hanging with Mr. Cooper to learn how to be a comedy writer. Every joke is like pow, 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 pow. All this plus a fresh tune. Who is it? Today on the MMC.